Number 41. A farmer making juice fills a glass bottle to the brim and caps it tightly. The juice expands more than the glass when it warms up in such a way that the volume increases by 2%. That is delta V divided by the initial uh, volume is 2 times 10 to the minus 3 relative to the space available. Calculate the magnitude of the normal force exerted by the juice per square centimeter. If its bulk modulus is 1.8 times 10 to the 9 newtons per meter squared, assuming the bottle doesn't break. In your in view of your answer, do you think the bottle will survive? So uh, first thing is, right, we have a, a jar here, all right, and it's going to be filled with uh, some liquid to the brim, right? So we got some water inside. Now, the water uh, will expand, okay, and the glass will too, but not as much as the water. So what's going to happen is there's going to be a pressure, right, being built up on the inside of this bottle, okay? So we can think about it as the as the uh, fluid inside of here is expanding, it's pushing right against the wall of the jar, and then the wall of the jar is pushing back right on the uh, fluid. So basically, right as the liquid, like I said in here, expands, it pushes on the glass jar. Now notice it would be a perpendicular force, right? So what is the normal force? It's a perpendicular force. So this is really the force that we're talking about here in terms of the question. Now, um, since we're dealing with liquids, we have to remember that we're really talking about a bulk, right, modulus type of uh, equation. So over here on the right-hand side, this is the equation where it says that the change in pressure is equal to negative bulk modulus multiplied by change in the volume divided by the initial volume. Okay, so what did they tell us? They gave us the bulk modulus. All right, so that's going to be the pre, uh, that's going to be for letter B here. So that's simple, 1.8 times 10 to the ninth. Okay, and then uh, they gave us the change, right? The change in velocity per the initial, excuse me, change in volume per too many V's in this class, right? Velocity, volume, V, V, V. Um, so they gave us the change in volume per the initial volume. And that worked out to be this fraction. So they told us this whole thing, right? So that's going to simply be 2 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, so now when we do this, let's calculate. So the pressure here is going to be 1.8 times 10 to the 9 multiplied by 2 times uh, 10 to the negative 3. Okay, so we get a value of 3.6. 3.6 times 10 raised to the, let's see, 3, 6. All right, and this is change in pressure, so that's Pascal. You can know it as Pascal, but also realize that that is the same as Newtons, Newtons per meter squared, okay? Now it's negative, but the negative sign just gives us a direction, so just take the absolute value here. That's what's important. Now this is, okay, not the answer, but we're very close, right? This is essentially... Let me write it with the Newton meter, uh, excuse me, Newton, Newtons per meter squared value. So this says that 3.6, that's a 2, 3.6 times 10 to the 6th Newtons per square meter. This is the amount of force that the juice would be exerting on the jar per square meter. But they don't want to know it per square meter. What did they ask us? They said per square centimeter. So this is fairly straightforward. All I have to do now is convert the square meter into squared centimeters. So meter on the top, centimeter on the bottom to cancel the meter, right? Uh, we know that there is 100 centimeters in one meter. Okay, so that gets rid of one of the meters here, right? But we got to do this again to get rid of two of the meters because there are two, right? So just do it one more time. Now both meters go bye-bye. And look, when you take centimeter times centimeter, what do you get? Centimeter squared. So this would then be the value. So simply take 3.6 times 10 to the 6th, and divide it by essentially 10,000, right? So this would become 360 newtons per square centimeter. This is the answer. All right, now, is this likely to uh, survive? Uh, well, how much? Let, let's try to figure out. It says 360 newtons per square meter. So why don't we try to figure out what mass 360 newtons is associated with? Right, so we can say that the weight is equal to the mass times gravity. The weight here is 360. Right, the mass is unknown. That's what I'm looking for. 
times 9.8. So simply divide out the 9.80. Divide out the 9. Point, no, come on, 9.80. Sorry, guys. 9.80. And we find that the mass will be equal to 360 over 9.8. Uh, 36, right? So 36.7 or so kilograms. Think about that. You, 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 you have a square centimeter. How big is that? I don't know, something like this, maybe, right? One probably smaller, yeah, somewhere around there. And literally in this in this area, you're going to place 36.7 kilograms. 36.7 kilograms, um, right? I mean, in terms of pounds, what is that? That's over 70 pounds, 80 pounds? I don't think so. I don't know how strong the glass is, but it's gonna be a lot of pressure. Hence why they don't fill these bottles up all the way to the brim, right? That's why there's a little air gap there when you drink your soda or your juice or whatever you drink. Okay, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, and I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.